Look at that. That's a familiar face. Shauna Kuei, sh excuse me, Shana Lynn Kuehu, twin sister of Shauna. And she used to play for Idaho. Welcome back to the Stanleys. We are at the midpoint of Western Athletic Conference women's basketball. It's the Idaho Vandals up over the Rainbow Ahine, 33 to 27 at the half. And some action from Idaho. It was really about the senior Rochelle Clokey, a preseason first team all whack pick. And the senior working the baseline. She's got the inside out game. She shoots 46% from the field. And a lot of that coming from the baseline. So deft at knowing when to pull up, knowing when to drive in. And we're going to see her hit a three on the outside as well. She had one three ball. Accounted for 14 points, Cloakey, in the first half. And Kawehu got off to a quick start. There you see the muscle of Shauna Lake Kawehu inside. Kanekoa with the assist, Arbuckle muscling in. So points coming, pretty balanced scoring in that first half. Kanekoa mostly an assist giver. Didn't score much until this deuce came late in that first half. So Keisha Kanekoa trying to get off the mark along with Shondale Kuehu and I think Megan Tinnen, who's going to have to look for some threes here as the Wahine are going to give chase. The Idaho Vandals up 33-27. to We'll return with more action from the Stanley. Not good by Kanekoa chasing it down as Kuehu loses control of it and they will go to the arrow and the arrow will point to Idaho. Pokey is dangerous in that corner. Drives, puts it up, reverse layup. Oh, what a great shot. You know, Cloakie's just, it's tough to put a post player on her, right? She's too quick for the post player and she's a good sized guard, so she's tough for the guard. And it's just a tough matchup with Rochelle Cloakie. Go the other way. Here's Cloakie with Bungaite. She takes one step and up and in. And from a basketball family, her father Dennis played basketball for Washington State. Collision across the way. Lenny gets up. She appears to be okay for Idaho. Lissa blows underneath. That could be on uh, Olo Lunafe, and that's her third. And that's big. Nice, nice job of posting up by Jackson. Nice aggressive job by the freshman. You see the wide base. Kanekoa comes up court against Cheever. Accelerates, goes down the middle, lays it up, bounces in. There you go. Uh-oh, Kanekoa tossing the headband to the sideline. She means business. So Hawaii comes back. Cuts in to that six-point halftime lead, and now they trail by three, a 6-0 run. Talani brings it up on the wing. Whistle blows away from the ball, taking a tumble. In the middle that time is Arenzi for Idaho. Foul is called on uh, Camilla Jackson. Delaney, down low, shot up by Koki, and a foul is called. They're going to call it on Jackson. That's her third. You need a stop. They can't trade baskets. Good steal by Tenen. Tenen chased by Cheever. All Tenen. 39-37. Hawaii closes up again. Kalani will bring it into the front court. Baseline drive, shot up by Graham, no. Graham hits the floor, ball on the floor, comes rolling out to Cheever. Goes to Arenzi, whistle finally blows. We call three seconds. Three second violation on Idaho. So when we come back, Hawaii has a chance to either tie it or even take the lead. Here's Kanekoa accelerating against Cheever. Stops, pops. That rattles in, rattles out. Do rebound, no. Still fighting for the rebound. Heidel comes up with it. Heidel is blocked. Whistle blows, and Heidel will go to the line. A little more fight in the dog in this half, if you will, as Wahine have come out to play battling for the board. Rebecca Deuce kept a couple balls alive underneath. There you see the miss right there, and it's a scramble on the other side. The freshman's going to come up with it and go right back up. That was on Graham. That was her second. Idell now with a total of five points. Second shot doesn't go. 
Graham comes up with it. Here's Talani. Talani, her pass comes off of Graham that time. And the whistle blows. Take a look, it must have been due from behind. His Graham couldn't quite find a handle underneath. Do attacks another personal foul. Cheever. Moments ago, that perfect three, giving breathing room to Idaho again. Arenzi. Her pass, and down it goes. Down goes Cloakey, and Cloakey really hit the floor hard. Challenge for the possession of the ball by Kamikoa. Floki went up and then she came down, no support. At all, this is ugly. Take a look, they both go up and Koi, or excuse me, Kanekoa trying to help her land, got her arm tangled inside and Floki hit her head and her shoulder. That is not a player they can afford to lose here. Floki's got 18 points on the night. She was stunned, Floki was. Kanekoa will come over and she will uh, console Cloakey. In the meantime, there is a discussion. And remember those discussions about intentional fouls and things like that? Well, the new rule What's is that if the elbow is used or that kind of thing and that player hits hard, they're going to discuss it. I'll tell you, her knee was bent in an unbelievably awkward position on that replay. They're going to take Cloakey off and have a closer look at her. I really don't feel like there was any no, foul play both, involved. I, yeah, I They're think both going for the ball. And Cloakey being taller, you know, Kanekoa kind of got the body of her a little bit. Olo Wunafe will take the free throws. And say 10 to Cloakey. Olo Wunafe puts in the first. Olo Wunafe came into this game with 1,222 career points. This team, a perfect four for four. It's a team that leads the Western Athletic Conference. It's 73% from the charity stripe, so not a team you want to put on the line. So they're talking to Cloakey. Next to the bench, it is 44 to 38. Here's Cheever. Kalani in the deep corner. Ola Runefe cannot penetrate. Shot up from three-point territory is not good by Talani. Heidel brings it back. Good rebound by Heidel. Timmon misses everything. And they battle on the floor. A little aggressive there by you see by Idaho, you're going to see Patterson come up with it, just barely touch the front of the rim, and Allie Patterson will go up and Teleni bulldozing her way in. Starting to get a little heated here in the second half, Jay. Yes. That's good. That happening on completely opposite ends of the floor. Pokey looking to return. Shot up. Kanekoa, that's her shot. She likes that baseline, 12 footer. Arbuckle. Single digits on the shot clock. Shot put up by Tennant. Okay, Good left hander by Tennant. Really was, got knocked in the head on the way up with the left hand. And Tennant, another senior with some fire this season. So Hawaii back to a two point deficit again. They battle back. Tawani to Charleston. In the corner, Arenzi cannot penetrate. And high bell. Johnson again. That's blocked, and they called that foul from almost halfway to mid court. Hydell dropped it off for Arbuckle. Arbuckle off the lane. Her shot is not good. Fighting for the rebound is Patterson. They're going to call a foul there, not a possession. This is Allie Patterson's kind of game. If you're in a fight, that's the person you want to be in it with because uh, Patterson will scrap. Lorenzi. 
Graham. Going up to challenge Graham was Arbuckle. Again, you don't want to send these guys to the free throw line. And Graham, nice move against Patterson. And Arbuckle trying to help, but gets herself in the air. Graham has been a spark. You mentioned she's had two years worth of injury problems. And speaking of injury problems, there you see Cloakie. Kondikoa, three-point territory. Drops it off for Patterson. Patterson muscles her way down the baseline. Gets rid of Graham and drops the ball in. 47-44, back to a three-point deficit for Hawaii. Kaleni on the outside. Kaleni against Heidel. Heidel steals it. Heidel goes in for the hoop and gets it, makes it a one-point game. And Kaleni still can't figure out what happened. Gotta like the freshman play, Sydney Heidel. That's her second steal and layup of the night for the Rainbow Wahine off the bench. Arenzi to Teleni. Teleni can't take the shot. Charleston outside, it goes to Cheever. Graham gives up the ball. Shot up by Cheever, that's way short. Didn't hit a thing. With it is Connie Cole, almost loses it. Patterson gets tied up. Will go to the arrow, but the arrow will point Hawaii's way. 9.52 left to play in the game. Watch Heidel, just hassling, hassling, goes down till any slips and doesn't, isn't able to get up. And Heidel, I don't think she could believe how open she was. Almost, almost blows that layup, but the freshman putting it in, playing well, well defensively, Jim. That that's, that's what she's giving you. Yeah, that was kind of an embarrassment for Teleni. And she watched, she watched Heidel go all the way in and lay it up. She was looking for a referee to do something, but she definitely slipped. So this is a huge opportunity with Rochelle Cloakey. Left this game with 18 points and six rebounds. A senior leader, the best shooter on the team. There you see her. And it looks like she's being let out of the cage and gonna have a seat by Newley. So Cloakey getting ready to come back into the game. Whether she will be at 100%, that's the question. But it was decidedly clear that Idaho did not have the offensive uh, capability without Koki. Koki so. is what makes his team go offensively, no doubt about it. And Ola Runafe has been awfully quiet. She comes in here averaging 14 a game, and Ola Runafe only with four thus far in the ballgame. She had 25 in the first meeting in Idaho. She has three personal fouls. And that's quieted her game offensively. So here comes Connie Cora. Idell underneath, muscles it up and gets it. And again, it was a, a belief system that Idaho had. They couldn't believe that she was going to go all the way underneath and muscle. Cloaky, no. Idell with the rebound. Tommy Koa, 48-47 with nine minutes and 20 seconds left. That's the only lead change of this game, and it belongs to Hawaii. They trailed all the way through the first half, and here in the second half, they are now on top. Bad pass by Patterson. Patterson tried to get the ball to Heidel. She was too close to her. Ball kind of just tumbled away. You know what you don't want is the basketball inside that high post area with that zone, it's very difficult. When you put it on the floor and it's almost a turnover every time. So you got to get it out of there quickly or turn and take the, the jump shot. Ola Runefo. And it is a foul away from the ball. Against Heidel and Heidel having a big impact on this game. 48-47 Hawaii has reached out and grabbed the lead in this game with 8.44 left. Patterson. Ola Runefeld. Patterson goes to the hoop. That ball behaves. Ola Runefeld realized that she has three personal fouls and a lot of time left to play in the game. Kuehu will come back in. She comes in for Gaddis. 
That's just a strong move by Patterson. When she controls that emotion, she can be very, very effective and really give this team a lift off the bench, and she's doing that right here. Charleston calls for the foul. Patterson completes the three-point play, and Hawaii leads 51 to 47. And unbelievably, at this point in the game, Hawaii is on a 9-0 run. And you talk about a team that has tried to play the game so there will be a time that they can overcome. Well, that time has occurred. It occurred at nine minutes and 40 seconds left. You know, we talked about just being aggressive. Bringing the ball back is Orenzi. That ball almost stolen away by Kuehu. Wow, where's the whistle? Come on. And down goes Cloakie again, and Cloakie may have re-injured the knee. Well, it looked like they butted heads there, and Kuwait with a couple great defensive plays, this being the second one since she returned to the ball game. 51 for Hawaii, 47 for Idaho. It has been a battle, literally a battle. Take another look at this contact again. You see it come to Cloakie Kuehu with the two-handed steal. Once Kuehu turns her back, I think there's got to be a foul call right there on Cloakie. Whistle still hasn't blown. And Cloakie getting beat up once again. And you can just see the grimace on her face. So Cloakie goes back to the bench. Hawaii on an 11-0 run. Can you believe that? I mean, they weren't close to that in the first half. And throughout most of this second half, but all of a sudden, they have become aggressive and they have become successful. Teleni gives the ball up. Teleni goes down the middle, bumps into Heidel and a foul is called. I'm impressed with the strength of the freshman. Sydney Heidel shot put champion in high school and for a freshman guard, she bumps people off the ball. Kuehu. Kuehu gets into the lane and partially blocked. Kuehu fighting for the rebound. Graham fighting for the rebound. Kuehu finally comes oh. up with it. And here's Connie Cohen. Look at this shot. Connie Cohen, no. Lorenzi with the rebound. Time was running out for Hawaii. Lorenzi against Heidel. And steps on the baseline. Hawaii will control it. I tell you, Sydney Heidel getting a little hand from the crowd as she leaves the game, and Megan Tinnan, the senior, in for Heidel. Jackson, high point, goes down low. Can't get it in from the left side, so she gets it in from the right side. After taking a shot, top of the head. It well, almost looked like she went out of bounds. You're going to see her drive to the basket from the left side. Watch her get her own board. Underneath, just fighting. Camilla Jackson. Hawaii leading 55 to 49. Physical, physical game, and it's favoring the Wahine. Shot up by Jackson is good. 56 49. Hawaii on the perimeter. Coming out to the high post as Jackson whistle blows. You're going to call it a Renzi for the Vandals against Patterson underneath. Patterson aggressively posting up. Had the mismatch in there, and she will go to the free throw line. Lorenzi's second personal foul. Patterson in this game has seven points. Two free throws in the first half. She has seven points and three right hooks. And, and maybe, and maybe, and what That's we don't see. Charleston able to grab that ball and uh, watch it go out of bounds. Last touched by Hawaii. Hawaii 12 of 18 from the free throw line. They'll have to do better here with about five minutes left in this game. Cheever stolen the way. Boy, I thought that was a clean steal. I thought that was a clean steal. Ooh, when you got that angle, she took the perfect angle, accelerated right through the dribbler. Take a look, watch Kuehu takes off right there. And you know, if Cheever had a kept, if kept moving, 
And the contact would have been there. I think that would have been the right call, but Cheever sort of let up. 56-49. Connie Cole is over talking to the referee and saying, hey, what did I do wrong? Come on, what kind of a call was that? If you're going to make a call, get in a position to make the call. She, she has all the all the right speeches. After all, she's a senior. <laughs> if she doesn't have, she can get them from you because you're pretty good. <laughs> Newly on fire over in the huddle for Idaho. Doesn't like what he sees. And here comes into the game Olo Runafe. He's playing with four fouls, remember. But she is by far the big scorer, the big rebounder, the go-to player. If you're going to play catch-up, Ona Runafe has all the credentials. What a block by Kuehu. Trying to get underneath was Teleni. It has been a long night for Teleni against Kuehu. Let's her go. Knows that she's got that advantage from the back. Shot up, and that is in by guess who? Back in the game, Floki. So Cloakie now with 20 points. It's 57-51 Hawaii, 432 left. So now, Idaho is back to full power. Shot up by Tenen. Gets it! Big shot by Tenen. And a gutsy shot. Tenen with only one other three attempt, and it wasn't very good. The senior, that was a quick trigger, a tough shot, and she drills it. 38th of the year. Almost stolen away. Tony, it is stolen away. Stolen away by Tinnan. Tinnan cross court. Put up by Kuehu. Yes! Boy, Hawaii looking good. Stealing. Getting out in front. Great passes at the end. Guard play, guard play, guard play. We talked about that trio of Tinnan, Kuehu, and Kanekoa needed to come out in the second half and be aggressive. and. That's a great pass across on the steal. It was really started with Kuwait, who Tinnan picked up the pieces. And before that, it was Megan Tinnan, the leading three-point shooter on his team, has not had those looks tonight. She makes a look out of nothing and drills a three. Hawaii on a 20-4 run. 20-4. And this is the biggest lead of the game for Hawaii. They took the lead with nine minutes and 40 seconds left in the second half. They trailed all of that time. They trailed from the opening tip through halftime and into the second half. Melissa Charleston will be at the free throw line, 67% shooter. Her best performance this year, 15 against New Mexico State. In the first meeting against Hawaii, she had 10. Shot is up, it is not good. And coming up with it is uh, Hawaii's Camilla Jackson. So the clock starts to tick again. Kamikoa with it. Hawaii with the advantage here, and the clock on their side. But as you said, they have got to keep it in gear. Kuehu. Single digits. Kuehu shot. Good. Oh, that was big. And that's a shot she's been working on. She's trying to extend her range a little bit. Huge, and nobody on Kuehu. Kuehu now with 13 in the game. Ola Lunafe puts it up, no. Kind of just threw it up and hoped. So Jackson, Camilla Jackson will be called for the foul. That's her four. And three minutes exactly left to play in this game. It was the last piece there, the bump. Camilla Jackson with four. Hello, Rumafe from Windsor, Ontario, Canada. Misses the free throw. Hello, <laughs> Rumafe, second shot, rattles out. Leaping rebound underneath there by Kuehu. And things are just going away as well. All the way. Now she pulls it back out by midcourt. Speaking of Connie Cohen. Cuejo. Hawaii running down the clock. Single digits again. Tenen. Tenen baseline drive. Bank shot. Short. And they're going to give it to Idaho. 
Boy, that was huge because Ola Runefe playing with four fouls, that would have been out of the game for her. Let's see if she is in fact there. Looks like a good call. That's gutsy by the senior. 64, 51, 228 left. Charleston pulls up. Ola Runefe all the way, lays it up, blows the layup. Ball comes off to Jackson. And Hawaii with a fresh 30 seconds. Kanikoa with a double team gets it across the line to Kuehu. So the, on the cusp of a big victory here, Kuehu that goes in. I that could have been that could have been the seal right there. I've Two minutes left, 66-51. And I've seen that Kuehu show before. Tough to double team her. She's so strong. Shot up and not good. Foul underneath. Cloakey at the line. Shot is good. 66 to 52. Cloakey will try it again. Idaho's really got to put the pressure on now. Second shot is perfect. And Cloakey with a total of 22 points. 66 53. And we'll try it again. Shot up and in. 67 53. Hawaii leading. Shot up underneath. That is not good by Rogers. And oh. then Ona Runafe steals it and puts it up. And that will count. And a foul is called. But Patterson can't believe it. it was a turnover and. Back to a turnover, Ola Runafe. Great job there, getting it back from Patterson and getting to the free throw line. She's gotta hit this, and she does. Now it is 67 to 54. A lot of wiggle room for the University of Hawaii. Clock starts again. With it is Kuehu. Kuehu, three on one. Kuehu underneath to Patterson. Patterson having trouble, they double team her. Gets it back out to Tinnan. Coming up in a minute to play. Kinnan underneath, Patterson, good. A little bit messy, but they finally found it. 69-54. Ola Runefe, no. Here comes Cuejo again, long pass all alone. Is Jackson, and Hawaii will win this. Hawaii will win this. What a victory for Hawaii. From the deep corner, shot is good by Cloakey. Cloakey, no matter what the situation, still could shoot away with it. And falling down with it on the baseline is Kanikoa. Ooh, Kanikoa. Uh oh. Gingerly. Yeah, twisted that ankle, twisted it. This is not good. This is not good. Maybe a cramp. That would be. That would be better than an ankle turn. Ahead it goes to Rogers. Ola Lunafe. That's all net. Three pointer. 72 to 60. Still 12 point lead for Hawaii with 17 seconds left. Ayabe. Kuehu. Eight seconds left. And that's it. Idaho will concede. Hawaii comes from behind. They trail by six at halftime. They never led until nine minutes, 40 seconds left to play in the second half. And then when they did take the lead, they sealed it and they expanded on it. And they win 72 to 60 over Idaho. So Hawaii now in the Western Athletic Conference is two and a may not be in the big scheme of things something that is going to shake things up but for hawaii hey they'll take it for all the things that they had to go through they'll take it they win this one 72 to 60.
We had an incident at the end of the game. John Mooley, the head coach of Idaho, uh, was going to shake hands with uh, Dana Takahara Diaz. Uh, Dana Takahara Diaz put out her hand. He did shake it, but then he shook his finger at her, apparently very upset with the physicality of uh, Cloakey's injury, saying that that wasn't, you know, that wasn't kosher, that wasn't real Division I basketball play. I really don't know what he said, but there was an incident there, so we'll keep that in mind, and you can too, see if anything comes from that. The eighth-ranked Hawaii softball squad opens the 2011 season with the Paradise Classic at the Rainbow Wahine Softball Stadium next weekend. First up for Hawaii in the four-team tournament is Southern Utah, the Summit League. Matchup between the Rainbow Wahine and the Thunderbirds gets underway Thursday at 6. You'll be with me. Eh? I'll be with you. Catch all the live action right here on K5, the home team. For Lori Santi. And the K5 sports crew, Hawaii wins again. The Wahine upset Idaho. This is Jim Leahy. Thanks for watching. Make tomorrow better.